Okay, so the focus yesterday was binary compounds, and we looked at type 1. So what you have to ask yourself when you look at a compound is, is it binary? That means does it have just two elements? If it is, then we look for the presence of a metal. If not, it's a type 3, it uses prefixes, and we'll talk about that on Monday. If it does have a metal present, we have to ask if the metal forms one, more than one cation, which means is it a transition metal or is it a true metal? So if it has more than one cation, these are our transition metals. And over here are our true metals. So we focused yesterday on type 1s where we use the element name for the cation and then we end it in eyed. For the type 2, we're going to have to determine the charge of the cation and we're going to use a Roman numeral. So the big thing is identifying what type of a compound you're dealing with. So today we're going to focus on type 2. Okay, here's the rules. Type 2 binary compounds have a transition metal and a nonmetal. Transition metals have more than one charge possible, so we have to rely on the charge of the nonmetal to find the charge on the transition metal. All right, let me go to another slide. We're going to look at the periodic table slide. And one of the things I want you to remember is the other day with the periodic table, I told you to put the charges on top. So noble gases always have a zero charge. We know that the halogens tend to form a minus one charge and that the next group over a minus two charge, the next group over a minus three charge, just meaning that when they react with the metal, they tend to gain an electron, gain two electrons, gain three electrons. And over here, remember, we had the metals that were the plus one, plus two, and then we had our special aluminum that always forms a plus three. So all here in the trough, they don't have a set plus one, plus two, plus three. They can form more than one ion. So in order to uh, determine what the charge on these ions are, we have to rely on the ion that it, it connects with, the anion it connects with, and it has to be based off of that charge. Let's do an example, and I'll show you what we're talking about. So FeCl2 is a binary, and the answer to that is yes. Is it a metal? Is it binary? And that's yes. Is it a metal and a nonmetal or a transition metal and a nonmetal? And you'll find Fe in the trough. So it's a transition metal and a nonmetal. So we're going to name Fe, which is iron. We're going to name Cl, which is chlorine. But we're going to change the name on chlorine to chloride. And that's all fine and dandy. The only problem that I have is that I don't know which iron ion I'm talking about because it can form more than one. So what I'm going to do is rely on the charge of the nonmetal. Chlorine, let's take a look back at the periodic table again. Chlorine over here is in group 7, always has a minus 1 charge. That's what we're going to rely on when we go back to name this compound. All right. So we're going to look at chlorine. Chlorine has a minus one charge. Here's where some basic algebra comes into play. How many chlorine do, do I have in this example? I have two. That means that this anion side has an overall charge of a negative two. And if we want this overall compound to have an overall charge of zero, then I have to make this side over here equal a positive two. So we just go backwards with algebra. How many iron do I have? I have one iron. What must be the charge on this one iron in order for this side to be a plus 2? X must be a positive 2. So the way I'm going to write this is I'm going to say iron, Roman numeral 2, and then I change my ending of chlorine to chloride. And this does not indicate how many iron we have. This indicates the oxidation state or the charge on that iron ion. Now, your book discusses an old way of naming, and this is used um, by using memorization and uh, depending on what the charge is on the metal. So old way you had to name transition metals included memorizing the possible charges of each metal. The higher one ends in ick, and the lower one ends in us. So, for example, iron has either a plus 2 or a plus 3 charge, and the only way you would know that is just by memorization. So, um, 
what we would do then, FeCl2, instead of being iron 2 chloride, since the plus 2 is the lower ending, we would use us as the ending, and we'd go back to their root name, so it would be ferrous chloride instead of iron 2 chloride. So those two are um, exactly the same thing. So if I were going to write this using um, the new method, it would be iron 2 chloride. And you can see how much easier it is to use the new naming method as opposed to the old one because there's not near as much memorization that's required. This is a table from your textbook that shows the common ions formed. One of the things I want to bring to uh, your attention here is mercury. Uh, mercury is odd anyway in that it's liquid at room temperature and it's a metal and it's super dense so it balls up, it just doesn't flow very well at all. So mercury with a plus two charge is a mercury with a plus two charge. Mercury one, however, is always written like this. So anytime that you see mercury with a little two and it's combined with something where the overall charge must be a positive two, this is actually mercury one. And I think you can see that because if you had two mercuries that each had a plus one charge, you would have HG2 to a plus two charge. So it's just a little quirk that you need to uh, be familiar with. All right, let's try another example. So let's say, for instance, we have uh, one we talked about yesterday, which was SNO. And I said it was snow, remember? And it wasn't really snow, but uh, SNO. So the first thing that we do when we do... Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you should be here by my by myself with this. Yeah, you have no idea. I talk to myself. I get mad at myself. I throw things. I sit sitting here going like this to get the stupid light to come back on because of. Never mind. I'm not. I'm not. I didn't. All right. Let's look at an example. One yesterday that we couldn't name properly because we didn't know how to was snow or SNO. So it's a binary compound, yes, because we have two elements and only two different elements. So the next thing we ask ourselves if you're following the flow chart, does this metal, is it a metal and a nonmetal? And it is a metal and a nonmetal. So we're over on the right hand side of the flow chart we used earlier today. The next question is, is it a transition metal? Does it form more than one cation, or does it form just one? And it's in the trough, so it's a um, type 2 that we're going to be naming because it can form more than one cation. All right, so we look at it, and we rely on the steady one, and that's oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6, so oxygen always has a minus 2 charge. How many oxygen do I have? I have one. So the overall charge on the anion side is a negative 2. That means that in order for this to be 0, we need this side to be a positive 2. So how many 10 atoms do I, or ions do I have? I have 1. So what must be the charge in order for this overall side to be a positive 2? The charge on 10 has to be a positive 2. So I'm going to write that as 10. Whoops. Roman numeral 2, and oxygen becomes oxide. Let's do one more. Let's do SN2O. So we still have the same two um, elements involved in this reaction. It is a type 2 because 10 is a transition metal. So we do the algebra again. So oxygen is always a minus 2. There's one of them. So our overall charge on the anion side is a negative 2. That means that um, that's our charge over here. We look over here at the 10, and if this side is negative 2, we know this side has to be a positive 2. This time, instead of 1, we have two 10 ions. And in order for my charge to be a plus 2, that means that each 10 has to be a plus 1 charge. So this one will be written 10, 1, oxide. Let's try one more example, SNO2. So this time we still recognize we have a transition metal. Oxygen is where we rely on our charge. So it's a negative 2 for each oxygen. I have two oxygen, so that means this side is a negative 4. 
That means that this overall has to be zero, so that means 10 on this side has to be a positive four. We have one 10 atom in this compound, so each one has to be a plus four charge. So this one will be written 10, four oxide. 